Konnichiwa, Samurai James here, part 7 of 7 in my series on 7 Supplemental Samurai Armors. This part, Kogake for the feet. So what are Kogake? They are protection for the feet, even though it's a common trope that we see samurai running around in Waraji sandals or Geta flip-flops. You know, this is something that they would wear to protect their feet. It is made out of plate. It is articulated by a kusari in between. Sometimes that would just be fabric. This particular example is plate and kusari. And it has this split toe design so that it can actually be worn with waraji or with geta. This is a very good protection for the feet and it's something that the samurai had and used that a lot of people don't know about. So just how far does this wrap around? Well, there's additional plates here in the back that I'm gonna untie and show you. It encompasses the entire foot all the way around the back. So here, these plates go around and tie off, so it fully encases the foot and provides protection here on the top. Now, what's with this fabric? Sometimes you can cover this fabric with kusari as well to provide extra protection, and you have nearly complete protection from the knees all the way down to the tips of the toes. Now, what kind of variations of kogake are there? Well, there were also versions that simply had all kusari, which is male, rather than having any plates on it. Now, what are the benefits of Kogake? Obviously, especially the plate ones, it provides very good protection for the feet where you otherwise wouldn't have much. However, due to the way that some Japanese stirrups were designed, it was kind of redundant when they were on mounted combat. Once they dismounted, these became a lot more useful. However, once you're going in and out of buildings, of course, the Japanese have the custom to take their shoes on and off, so this is something else you would have to take off. Samurai were very mobile, not just on the battlefield, but in general. They're going around, they're climbing stuff, they're riding horses. This, of course, provides far more mobility than your foot ever could bend, unless you're willing to break bones. So this is something that wouldn't really impact their mobility. The weight is a very small difference. However, if they're doing something where they're going across streams or anything else where they may be getting wet, this is certainly a type of armor that I think they would want to not be taking because it's just going to get wet, it's going to get soggy, it's going to get heavy, it's going to be in the way. Other than that, I can't really think of a whole lot of uh, disadvantages to it. I think the main thing would be that they didn't seem to be overly common back then, so probably a lot of armors did not make them. But they're a really cool piece of armor, and it's something that I find really interesting because... It's a shame that there's such a cliché in all the pop culture that samurai went around in just waraji and geta shoes and, you know, I know that appears in the woodblock and everything, but this is actually really cool armor and it's nice to be able to see that, you know, there are modern reproductions available to get it, to wear it, and see how it works. It, it's a wonderful piece of armor and I'm surprised it doesn't get more attention. Now, if you've been following this series from start to finish, I said there was going to be seven videos. Surprise! We got a bonus eighth video. What kind of supplemental armor you say? Check it out in the next video. For this one, it's Samurai James saying thanks for watching and sayonara.